For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. Brothers and sisters, thank you for being here this morning for this poignant but also very beautiful memorial mass. On this day of all souls, it's a good thing to remember these words of our Lord, the promise of resurrection to those who believe in Him. There's naturally a, a kind of a solemn feeling to this day, a mood of remembrance and, and pondering. We recall those who have gone before us, who were once part of our lives, whom we love. Some of them have left us just recently, others many years past. But they're still dear to our hearts because they were very much a part of who we are. And now they've moved on from this life and they've entered into the life that awaits us all, the life that our Lord has prepared for us. When you think about it, the very act of remembering our loved ones is a blessing, isn't it? It can be hard, yes. Again, sometimes it's very near to our hearts. It is hard to be parted. But it's a blessing, too, because we should remember those who were so important in our lives. We remember them with love and probably some sadness, too, which is only fitting. It's hard to be parted from those we care about, but the ache that perhaps we feel in our hearts is really just a testimony to the love we have for them, the importance that they still hold in our memories and our hearts. So it's a solid day, but it's also very much a day of hope. The words of our Lord come back to us once again. This is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have eternal life, and I shall raise Him on the last day. And just to underscore this point, Jesus also says this, This is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what He gave me, but that I should raise Him on the last day. Of course, we're all sinners, and we have no claim to heaven. No one in sin may enter into the perfect holiness of heaven. It just kind of makes sense when you think about it. But that's the very reason, my friends, that God sent His Son into the world to forgive sin and to restore what had been lost, to open up for us once again the gates to eternal life. By dying on the cross, Jesus paid the price that we could never have paid on our own. It's beyond us. By rising from death, he shatters the bonds of death and he restores life to those who believe in him, as he just told us. And finally, by ascending into heaven, he opens the way for us to follow so that we too and our loved ones might dwell in the house of the Father. As we contemplate the passing of our own loved ones, these many dear souls who are commemorated by the candles that are lit today and many others besides whom we hold in our hearts, we can't help but think of the burden of sin that once weighed them down and that weighs us down too. But of course, the mercy of God is greater than sin. And for those who die in the Lord, there is every reason for hope. Jesus makes it clear that God doesn't wish any of us to be barred from heaven. Quite the contrary. He desires that we should be with him. And he also desires that very same thing 
for those we remember today. He went to the extremes of death in order to save him. And so we can place our trust in him now, that his mercy will still be with those who have died. So once again, this day should be, must be a day of hope for all of us. But this day is also a day of charity. Out of love for those who have died, we pray for them. We offer sacrifices and even penances for them. And most importantly, we offer this holy mass for them. I think sometimes the church's doctrine of purgatory is misunderstood, but it's really very logical. If we die and still bear within us the imperfections and attachments to sin, then we must be purified of those attachments, those imperfections. And so we pray for those who have passed away, who believe in Jesus and desire the new life that he has prepared for us. We pray in order to assist them on their way to sustain them in their purification and to hasten their journey. There's a spiritual solidarity about this day, a readiness to do what we can for the souls who are on their way to heaven. And the Mass, which we offer for the souls of the departed, is the greatest gift we can give. In every single celebration of the Mass, we enter into the saving sacrifice of Jesus himself. And by offering the Mass for our loved ones, we offer them the pledge of eternal life that Jesus won for all. Pope St. John Paul II encourages us on this day of all souls, and he says this, we feel bound, <clears throat> excuse me, we feel bound by charity to offer those brothers and sisters who have experienced the fragility of property of human existence the help of our vigilant prayer. May whatever residue of human weakness still remaining in them to delay their happy encounter with God be definitively wiped out. In charity, we offer whatever help we can give to our loved ones so that anything that might still hold them back from God would be wiped out, would be cleansed, purified. My brothers and sisters, as we continue this month of November, the month of all souls, let's remember our loved ones every single day. I'm sure we all do anyway. But let's make a point of it during this holy month. And let's also definitely hold on to the hope that our Lord offers. The hope that is rooted in his cross and resurrection the desire that he has that all should be saved. And on our part, let's do whatever we can to help them on their way, to hasten their journey, and to see them safely home. Because after all, we are all part of this great communion of saints. The saints already in heaven. The saints still fighting the battle here on earth and the saints, the holy ones, who are on their way. And trusting especially in the care of our Blessed Mother, we say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat>